In this assignment, I will show you how we can model this mid-century table. It's actually a quite simple design, basically made out of boxes, yet also very good to show you some of the limits. What's really quite interesting and what we will learn in this design uh, or exercise is how can we build something that has rounded and chamfered edges by using the follow me command. And I will, when modeling the lag, show you also some of the limits of the follow me command when we try to do this actually on angled edges and not like with the tabletop on edges which are horizontal or vertical. Very good. Now let's get started. Before we start, please go to the description of this video and click on the download link of this model. I will use this model during this exercise to explain my steps and what I'm going to do. Let's make a new file. Then we want camera to be parallel projection and we want the unit system to be decimal and turn off the length snapping. So we will start working with, on the tabletop first. It's a rectangle, 47, 28, three quarters of an inch thickness, 30 inches off the ground. Okay. So we can go to top view, go to the rectangle tool, go to the center, the lower left corner, you see the option key is helping us to start drawing from the center or from a corner. So cl click and you see now I can draw actually from the center when you press the option key. Now we can punch in the width and the depth. If I make a big rectangle that's stretched, you can see lower right corner dimensions, what number is what. So 300 is X, 30 or nine is the Y axis. So it means 47 comma space 28, enter. Very nice. The whole thing should be 30 inches off the ground. So I select everything with the move command, move it along the Z axis, or I press the up key. So arrow up key, then my mouse can be wherever, I only can move it up or down. 30, enter. Very good. Now, um, just pause and take a look. This will have a thickness of 0.75 inches. And now here I would like to have a nice rounding. So I draw an arc, double click, go to push and pull and click. Oh, great. Now this time it worked. Um, okay, maybe you go to this view. Now it worked again. And again, great. Now I can repeat this issue. So, but let me explain you what's happening here. So when I click and click again, you see how I removed a little bit of material. When I click and go further down, you see this stripe element or pattern. Basically, I'm snapping to the back face. So to this here, and this tells SketchUp, I want to cut through. That's perfect. That's the way it should be. But sometimes this doesn't actually work really predictable. So what I find much easier is when we need to round something, we do this while we have a flat sketch. The way I'm going to draw is, uh, the arc is pretty much the same now. Double click. And then before we continue, let's take a look at this. So this has 24 segments. In your case, it might actually be 12 segments. So I will go to the arc tool again and look at the bottom left it says option plus minus change the amount of segments if yours says 12 then you have to click and before you click again hold the alter option key and then press 12 times the plus i go four times the minus and then i double click so it draws the arc and trims of the rest and now you see this says 20. So you need to do you need to make one arc first and then you can count the segments. So here now I have 24. That's not enough. So undo undo go to here 
click, go to there, don't click yet, Alt, 1, 2, 3, 4. That was 1, 2, 3, 4. Double click, click, double click, click, double click. And you see the segment is the same, 24. And I can now add the radius. Very good. Very nice. So top surface is 30. That is where it is. So it has to go down by 0.75. There we are. Looks nice, no? Yeah. That's actually pretty, pretty good. So this is like how we make a very simple, um, how can I say that? Very simple uh, tabletop with rounded edges. But now if we take a look at this tabletop from the side, there we can see that this is actually slightly slanted. Hmm, how do we do this? Okay. We have the follow me command, and that's actually a very interesting process which we could could do. So I will double click or triple click everything, right click and say make group. Okay. So now this is um uh, could I say that this is grouped, so we can't connect anything to it. Then I could, for example, redraw all these lines. That is just unfortunately necessary there. And then I go from endpoint to endpoint of each line, and then I draw my my arc in. And you see, I can just snap on the existing geometry. And what I'm creating here right now is actually a path for the follow me command. Very good. So when this is done, actually, let's make one tag call this temp. And then this group object we created, we put into temp and hide it. So this is solid. That is great. That means it is actually a closed surface. Super. Okay, now I press delete for the field. So I just only have this thing left. So next step, I will go and find where is the midpoint, there's the midpoint. So seven point uh, 0 0.75 is how deep everything is down. So 0 0.75 and enter. There we are. And actually along the x axis, I go 0 0.752. You see the lines, let me do this again, from the midpoint is blue to go straight down and then red to go along the x-axis and not black because then it goes into any direction. Very good. So now I have this straight line and here I would like to create a chamfer. Maybe I go from midpoint to midpoint. That means this is actually kind of like a 45 degree in here. 135 outside. And then this I can delete. Okay, good. Let's continue from the end here I go up. Maybe snap to this endpoint there and go to there. Very good. Cool. So now I have actually created the profile for the follow me command. So follow me, select the profile. Okay, let's do this again, and then run it across it. Click, there we are. The surface is blue, which is not good. It's inverted, so triple click, or right click in reverse face. There we are, then, we can, then I can click this 
interface, press delete, and I can then do the following. I find where's the midpoint, it's there, and then at the bottom, where's the midpoint, it's there, and draw a line, and look, it fills actually everything in, and I do the, the same on top. There, very nice. Now, if I want to work clean, I can actually, with the eraser, simply paint over these edges and remove them. But we want to do this really cleanly. Same here. So we don't leave any segments left. From a distance, actually, that's a lot easier to do than zooming in a lot. Yeah, there we are. Now we actually have a nice chamfered um, tabletop that has the corners rounded. Now in my reference model, you see also these other edges are filleted. This model was not made in SketchUp because SketchUp already actually starts getting it to the limits of what it really can do. When we take a look at the legs, you will see this actually even more. So um, plus what we do in SketchUp is really more for creating a quick model for representational purpose. This is not something that's being made for production. So something like this is actually perfect good. So now I can double click this and then say make group. I will make a tag, table top, and add this to the tabletop. Very good. And this is our temp folder or tag. We can keep it there. This is perfect. Good. So our uh, the tabletop with this is done. The next logical element to build would be the steel frame that is under it. This frame is actually very easy to do, and particularly the offset command will be very useful because it's an offset of um, 2.5 inches from the outside edge and then the second offset 1.25 inches and then we have push and pull a thickness of 0 0.6 inches. Okay, so let's go back to here. Now, how do we do this? We actually do not have this these edges here because this is chamfered. So what I will do now, because I know my original um, layout, I will go to the bottom view, go to rectangle, go to here, press the Alt key, and then I will draw myself 47,28, this rectangle one more time. Good. So now I said 2.5 inches offset to the inside. Okay, here we are click 2.5 there we are and then a 1.25 inches offset again click 1.25 enter click there we are then this we can delete this we can delete this order line can go very good and let's actually add some lines here very good very good very good okay this is, for example, the way that all looks very logical. But now I'm going to show you actually a possible problem with this approach. So let's use the push and pull and say, hey, uh, here is the fill. I can push and pull this 0 0.6 inches and enter. Let's rotate around. Uh, yeah, looks good. But hey, what is this? Oh, it's open. Ha, huh, how did this happen? So because this is all just one connected surface, because of this here, SketchUp thinks, well, this area remains open. So how do we do this the way how we want? You also see here, this line is uh, thin and not thick. So SketchUp thinks this whole is actually one piece. So that's the reason why it only extrudes 
and keeps this bottom part open. If we now delete actually these uh, lines, you see now here at the edges, I get thick lines. So these are border lines. And now 0.6, enter, look at that. There we are, 0.6, there we are, see? So when you build pieces, this, it cannot be a connected sketch. It needs to be just a drawing for the individual piece. Now, when we add the rest, obviously we want to prevent anything to get distorted or connected. So I'll triple click and make group and then triple click, make group. Very nice to bring in the rest. Two ways how to do this. Click, click, click with the line command and then snap there, triple click and make group. Okay. Or I could select this and say, you make me a copy. Actually, I rotate this first, make me a rotated copy, 90 degrees, then move this to there. Very nice. And now I double click, go into editing the this group, select this face, go to the move command, click this one endpoint, and then along the Y axis, I press the left mouse, uh, left arrow key, I drag this till it snaps to that corner there. There we are. Pretty good, no? Okay. Now this whole frame should actually at the bottom. Okay, I can select everything go to the move command, go to one lower corner. And I have to be very patient and uh, control my mouse, I go straight down along the Z axis. And in case you go left and right, that doesn't work anymore. Pressing the arrow up key allows me to just move my mouse on a face and you see it snaps right to it. Click, they have moved it straight down. Because what you prevent what you want to prevent is to do something maybe like this and then it's moved. Click. Okay. Now we have to add a little bit of a crossbar. So I can, for example, go to here and then say, good. So what's the distance from here to there? So let's say 7.5 inches. Hmm, yeah, how do I do this? I can use the ruler, go to this edge, click and drag, and then type in 7.5 and enter. And I can do the same from this edge, 7.5 and enter. So you click, hold the mouse button and drag and release. This way then you can add guidelines. And with this guideline added, that's super easy there, it finds actually the intersection. Okay, now I would like to draw a parallel line to this. Take the offset 1.25. Well, we don't have a phase, so we can't do any offset. But here again, we can use the, um, the tape measurement, click and drag. And you see here, this goes up, this goes left and right or whatever. And then here when it's, um, it, it's magenta, it tells you this is really going perpendicular away from it. So one, 1 1.25 and enter. Very good. And then I can continue draw along these edges, intersection with the group. And there, there we are. Very nice. Click, oh, and now, click and drag till it snaps to the face. Very good. Triple click, right click, make group. There we are. Yeah, cool. Now I can um, make myself a 90 degree copy. How do I bring this one in so it actually perfectly snaps? Another good exercise. So I snap maybe to this edge, you see there, and then I click this and snap to this edge. 
Ah, shoot, now it's off here again. Okay, so what, what can I do? Well, I have to limit myself to X and Y. So I click, uh, that's the right arrow key. So I move it till it snaps to that edge, click. Very good. These two rotate, um, oh, actually at the center here, this might work. So option key to make a copy, rip. 180, there we are. Yeah. Very good. Now these are made as groups. I could have made those also as components because they are being shared objects. But for what we do, this is perfectly fine. We can keep it at this. And uh, yeah, there we have made the construction for the, the support for the tabletop and also the mounting construction for our legs. And the legs are now the last piece we have to make. Let's take a look at the leg. The leg initially looks actually quite simple and it has some very interesting details. This inner edge is rounded, then these edges are actually rounded, and the front and this back face, they are angled looks very simple, but this is something where SketchUp already will start struggling modeling efficiently with the built-in tools. This is also a really good case to show why I'm not very convinced about this statement, SketchUp is easy to learn, because essentially that, because the truth is SketchUp is easy to learn, that's true, because it can't do much. The moment you step out of the box what SketchUp only wants you to do, you will run into a lot of issues and frustration. So what does this mean here? Let's make this box pretty cool, easy. And we would like to round this one corner there. And then I can do the follow me and there. Sweet. I could even, let's say, go to here to this, follow me. Um, come on, sketch up. Oh, the radius is too big. That was my fault here. Yeah. Smaller one. Zip. There. Yeah, nice. Okay, so let's undo everything to here. And now I will take this edge and rotate it. Actually, I will, yeah, I will rotate the whole face by just, um, let's say, two degrees. There you can see it's slightly rotated. Okay, so let's draw this arc on top again. Follow me. Okay, uh, well, what happened? So if we take a look at the site, you can see what happened. It put in the filleted surface, but it's unable to really trim everything cleanly. And welcome to SketchUp, because this is already something SketchUp cannot do, which is very frustrating considering how expensive this program is. It's also not very new. So how can we still make this work? Well, we need to think about the order. So you see, I just have a straight edge that goes straight down. Then I'm going to fill it this, and then I will select kind of like this and this, and then move this a little bit, not rotating it, but just moving it as much as needed. I would have measured how much do I need to move it for the rotation. But you see, then it somewhat actually works. This is not necessarily perfect geometry, but it does the job for illustrating what we're trying to do. Okay, so now let's take a look at the table leg. So I will start by drawing the line actually from this lower midpoint because this will be right at, kind of like at this world plane. So from here, along the x-axis, it's red. 
this is six inches. Now, this goes straight down. You see how I found actually the ground line. Then along the x-axis, two inches back. Then I really don't know how high this has to go. So I press S escape. From here, click along the z-axis, two down. And along the x-axis, 3.5. And maybe here now, um, I will just click there. So now you see, hmm, this is actually not connected. Good, so this line I will delete and simply do it this way. So this is a little bit longer than two inches. Okay, let's go to the side view. Here we have an arc. Okay, 12, 1.5. This is inside, so this is good. Okay. And then push and pull one inch. Very good. Now we can actually put in an arc. Double click, and double click. These segments we would like to be 0.25. Oops, wrong one. Yeah, 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 12. There. And I can use the, it doesn't matter in this case, I can use the push and pull or the follow me. This is just a straight down piece. So push and pull here actually is fine. And then here we will do an arc on there. Point two five and point two five, cool. Yeah, and then zip. Ah, okay, careful that it doesn't simply auto extrude it for us. And down. Very nice. Okay. So this is actually very clean geometry but again this is all 90 degrees that's what sketchup's made for everything that's not 90 degrees in a box sketchup is a royal pain in somewhere good so how do we rotate this object uh well class said we can simply rotate it yeah not really let me show you something so we select this go to rotate go to here now i need to find actually the correct axis so left arrow key there and two degrees. Uh, what are you saying, class? Uh, rotation worked. Mm, did it really? Let's see. Let's go to the side view. Let's look on top. Uh, that thing went up. That's not good. And down here. Oh, look, this actually lifts up. So nope, we can't rotate it. Because it's essentially what we need is a slight tool or shear shift. So, hmm, what can we do here instead to make this look like rotated? Well, we need to figure out the distance, how much we have to move the lower edges so it looks from the side like two degree rotation. That's very easy. Select everything and make group, for example. So it's simply locked. I'm not doing anything to it. And then I can maybe draw a line can actually draw this line longer if I want to. Then I select this line. Same, same point there. Again, left arrow key, click, click, two degrees. Uh, but this was not really at the point. Left arrow key, click, and then two degrees. Okay, yeah, this is now clean. And to find this point down there, I'm not sure if we can simply use this as a snapping. So this point here has to be there, kind of like there, you see this. So double click, then I will select 
this, this, uh, no, this edge, this edge, and this edge. Go to move command. And then it's this corner point because that's where I drew the line along the x axis till it, oh yeah, it finds the intersection. Click. There we are. Yeah. Click outside. This we can this we can delete and look at this there very nice now from here to there this should be two inches uh, we can actually with the tape tool create a measurement there we are okay so this midpoint has to be there that's easy uh, double click to go into editing the group. Yeah, here you see this is a little bit more complicated selecting all the segments. So this didn't really do it. You notice left and right is actually, uh, sorry, click to the left, selects everything that's in it and click to the right, only selects, um, wait, pause, click and then drag to the right only selects what is really inside fitting inside that selection. If I click and then drag to the left, it selects also everything that the selection touches, but it's not only inside that selection, you see the difference. Okay, very good. Now move command, there's the midpoint left now right key, arrow key click let's verify midpoint midpoint two inches very good we can leave the group this piece is done now the whole object has to be rotated there's our rotate command you here 45 degrees and now we can position it so you to you, there we are. Or we have a midpoint here and there's some, there's the midpoint. Very good. Yeah. So now we need to make a rotation of this. So copy from there to there. Uh, so this has to be 90 degrees. And then uh, can I find the midpoint? There's the midpoint. There's the midpoint. There we are. Select both groups. Here's the midpoint of my plate and make a copy rotate with pressing the option key. Yeah, there we are. Really good. This is actually a pretty pretty clean and appropriate um, model for SketchUp. It leaves out few details. While the match isn't rounded, this edge here isn't rounded. But um, now you can see how long it took us to model this. So imagine in real life, the client has this table and you want to put something in that looks similar like this. Yeah, we can just quickly model it like this, put it into a scene, and then that's enough. Obviously, we, we would also add some materials. Um, but in terms of geometry, this is sufficient. Job done.